It is nice to meet you. Everyone from all around the world who came to Shincheonji Online Seminar, testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings. My name is Kim Che Hun from Shincheonji Church of Jesus, Anja Tribe. I know there are many pastors, theology students, and lay believers whose hope is in heaven who are gathered from all around the world today. The gospel of heaven hidden in the Bible with parables is to be testified during today's seminar. I'd like to first thank our Father God who allowed all this to take place and also everyone in attendance who came looking for the truth in this difficult time. With the heart of wanting God's grace to be upon every single one of you, let us pray to God with the same heart and start the seminar. Father God, we truly thank you. You've allowed, you've allowed life and truth to every person alive today. And by your grace, you've also allowed this online seminar, testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings, following the testimony and prophecy and fulfillment of revelation for the family of faith. We give you all thanks and glory. Please allow every family member of faith the eyes to see, ears to hear, and mind to perceive so that they can understand the true meaning of the Bible. Do not let them have misunderstandings about the Bible anymore, but fully and correctly understand your will written in it. I sincerely desire that they will perceive your love through the precious words that come from the lips of the instructor who is testifying to your words today. I pray all these things in the name of Jesus who gave us life. Amen. This seminar is being conducted with strict adherence to COVID-19 guidelines and social distancing regulations. Everyone, do you know the secrets of heaven promised in the Bible? It says in Matthew 13 that the secrets of heaven are hidden in parables. These secrets have a lot to do with things we can see often in our daily lives, including seed, field, tree, and bird. Please pay close attention to the Gospel of Heaven with the sincere hope of wanting to be there. Let's welcome up Instructor Lee Jae-in from Andrew Tribe who will be teaching us a lesson titled Introductory Lesson for the Figurative Seed, Field, Tree, and Bird with a big round of applause. Hello to all pastors, seminary students, and believers around the world who believe in heaven and eternal life. It's nice to meet you. I am Lee Jae-in, a center instructor among the 12 tribes of Shincheonji, who learned the word that's revealed from the tribe leader of Andrew tribe. And our tribe leader was taught by Chairman Lee Man-hee. Even though we are different in denominations and doctrines, we carry out a life of faith as believers based on the same word of the Bible. However, the reason why one couldn't understand is because it was hidden in parables, and the realities that appear when fulfilled have not been revealed. When the realities of these prophecies are revealed, they are the realities of the parables, so you can see and understand their meanings. The parables of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven should not be li known literally on the surface, but the deeper true meaning should be known. Today, the words to look over regarding the testimony on the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings will be the parable of the seed, field, tree, and bird. In the world, in order to reap the fruit, first the seed is sown in the field, and then, when they are fully grown, the crops are harvested to reap the fruits. But God also worked on this earth farming for heavenly crops. He said that this is like heaven. So through the words we will learn today, let us perceive the secrets of heaven hidden in the parable one by one. First, let's summarize the true meaning of the words we will learn today. The seed is the word of God. The field is a person's heart and also the world. And the tree is a person reborn of the seed of the word 
and the shepherd, and the bird represents spirit. I believe pastors already know these things. But even if you know this, I would appreciate it if you would listen to what I will be explaining today. Why did God put these spiritual meanings within the seed, field, tree, and bird that we can see often in nature? We must understand through the Bible, correct? First, I summarize the true meaning of the parable of the seed as the Word of God. If you look at the contents of the Bible, when mankind becomes fruitful and prosperous, or when animals and various plants grow, there are physical seeds that must be sown. However, one must know the true spiritual meaning that is hidden within the seed in order to perceive and understand the kingdom of heaven. Let's read the parable in Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 to verse 30. Jesus told him another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because when you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Yes, you read well. In verse 24, Jesus told them another parable, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. The kingdom of heaven is compared to the work of farming. But the important thing is that heaven that we as believers hope for is hidden in this. At first glance, it seems like it's a simple story of a farmer who sows a seed in the spring, where the seed grows in the summer and harvests them in the fall. But no matter how much you wash your eyes and look at it, it won't look like heaven. Because it is not actually referring to the physical seed that a farmer sows, but a spiritual farming by sowing spiritual seeds. And therefore, we need to know the true meaning hidden in the parables so that we can perceive the kingdom of heaven that we all hope for. Then what kind of true meaning was hidden in this seed that Jesus spoke of? In Luke chapter 8, verse 11, it is written that the seed is the word of God. So let's take a look at how we grow spiritually through the seed, which is the word of God, one by one at this time today. First, before we know the true meaning of the spiritual seed, let's take a look at the physical characteristics of the seed. The first characteristic is that the seed is a source of life. There are many living things in the world, including humans. All of creation is different in appearance, but strangely enough, they start from a seed. Its size is very small, but it can grow large because it contains life. In other words, the source of life begins with the seed. The second characteristic is that when a seed is planted, it does not stand still, but when the time is right, it will always sprout and then grow and continue to grow in size. This is because the seed created by God has vitality, so it can grow and change like this. Finally, the third is that you reap what you sow. There is an old saying, when you plant beans, you get beans. And when you plant red beans, you get red beans. If beans are planted, then red beans can never come out because there is a genetic trait that reaps what you sow. 
You can think of it as the same principle that when we receive our parent seed, we follow the surnames of our parents, such as Mr. Lee, Mr. Kim, Mr. Park, and furthermore resemble our parents' faces and personalities. There are many kinds of seeds with these physical characteristics in the world. However, there are only two kinds of spiritual seeds to learn about today. The reason why is because there are two entities who sows these different seeds, God and the devil. So there are only two kinds of spiritual seeds, God's seed and the devil's seed. Keeping these physical characteristics in mind, let's try to understand the true meaning of the parable of the seed. In Mark chapter 4, verse 13 says, If you do not understand the parable of the seed, how can you understand any of the parables? In other words, there are many parable terms in the Bible. But since the parable of the seed is the most fundamental, we should start with the seed and examine the meanings one by one, correct? The next verse in verse 14 says that the farmer sows the word, not the literal seed. Just as a farmer goes out to the field and sows the seed, this natural principle is used to explain that it is similar to when the shepherd of God goes out to the world and preaches the word of God. So the answer to the true meaning of the parable of the seed has been found. Let's read the words of Luke chapter 8, verse 11 together. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Yes, in Luke chapter 8, verse 11, it is written that the seed is the word of God. It's so easy. Then I, who is preaching the word here, is also diligently sowing the seed of the word to all of you. So to summarize, the reality of the parable of the seed is the word of God. As I mentioned before, there are tens of thousands of seeds in the world, but there are only two spiritual seeds in the Bible. The reason why is because there are two spiritual entities, which is God and the devil. So we can know that the seed that is sown can be the seed of God and the seed of the devil, which is the word of God or the word of the devil. If you look at the contents of 1 John chapter 3, verses 9 to 10, it is written that the children of God who are born of God's seed do not sin. Also, in verse 10, it says that the children of the devil, who do not belong to God, will also appear in the world. So what exactly is the seed of God? In John chapter 17, verse 17, it says that the Father's word is truth. Truth, which is the unchanging truth, will be the seed of God. Then the devil's seed is not the word of God, but false words given by the devil. In other words, lies. So why is this type of seed important for us to know? If you go to John chapter 1, verse 1, it says that this word is God. And in verse 4, it is recorded that there is life in the word. Just as our body must have life to live, so we can see that in order for our soul to live, we must put the word of God that contains life within us. In this way, in the Bible, being born again of God's seed is called being reborn. Let's read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 together. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring Word of God. Yes, in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, it says that you are born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring Word of God. Man's words do not have life, so it is difficult to change no matter what people say. But the spiritual seed of God's word is living and enduring. Therefore, 
We must absolutely contain this word within us so that we can change and be reborn. The reason why we must be born again is that if we look in John chapter 3, verse 3 to 6, it says that we cannot see or enter into heaven unless we are born again. That is, we must be born again to, to see and enter into the kingdom of God. And since the seed of God's word must be within me to qualify to God, call God as Father and to become one family with God and live in heaven, a believer who hopes for heaven and eternal life must be reborn with the seed of God's word. Then let's find out what the second parable of the field really means. We just saw that the true meaning of the parable of the seed is the word of God. Then if the physical seed must be scattered on the field to be sown, then where should the spiritual seed, the word of God, be sown? According to Luke chapter 8, verse 15, the good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart. So the field in which the seed of God's word is sown is a person's heart. To put it simply, we must listen to God's word with our hearts and keep it in our hearts so that it may bear fruit through the seed later, correct? And just as there are small fields and large fields when looking at physical fields, the spiritual field also has the meaning of the world in a larger concept. So looking at the physical characteristics, a field is a place where seeds are sown. And when those seeds are sown, they will grow and bear fruit. Considering these characteristics, we will also look at the spiritual meaning through the Bible. Let's read together the words of Luke chapter 8, verse 15 that we looked at earlier. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. Yes, in Luke chapter 8, verse 15, it says that to be a good soil means hearing the word with a noble and good heart, retain it, and produce a crop by persevering. Just as a farmer sows a seed in a field, the seed grows and bears a precious fruit in due time. In the same way, the seed of God's word must be sown in our heart where I must keep the word, persevere, and produce precious fruit for the Lord. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, Apostle Paul says that you are God's field. So we can see that those who receive the word of God become God's field. Therefore, the meaning of the spiritual field will be the heart of a person who contains the word, which is the seed of God. And the field has one more meaning. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 38, Jesus said that the field is the world. What kind of world is this, really? It will be the field where Jesus sowed, that is, the church of Jesus, where the words of Jesus were sown. If the seed of the word is sown in one person, it will become a person's heart. But if people where the seed is sown gather one by one and become a larger field, wouldn't it be the world of the church of Jesus? So, to organize all of this, the field is a person's heart and the world. Then, since we have looked at the meaning of the parables of the seed and the field, let's take a moment to perceive the kingdom of heaven through today's content. God prophesied through the prophet Jeremiah about 2,600 years ago the work of heaven's farming that will take place here on earth. And it was fulfilled by sowing the seed through Jesus Christ 600 years after. So let's read Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 27 together. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will plant the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the offspring of men and of animals. 
You write well. In Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 27, we see that God had promised that both the seed of man and the seed of animal or beast will be sown in the house of Israel and Judah. Then when will all the prophecies of the Old Testament be fulfilled? At the, time, at the first coming of Jesus, 600 years after it was prophesied, both the seed of man and the seed of beast was sown. So this comes true. If you look at Jesus' explanation in Matthew chapter 13, verse 37, it says that the one who sows a good seed is the Son of Man. Ultimately, the man who sowed the good seed in his own field was Jesus. Being the Son of Man, the good seed that Jesus sowed is the good seed of, seed of man prophesied in Jeremiah. And when we go to verse 38, where Jesus sowed this good seed in his own field, which is referred to as the world, that is Jesus' field. Then in his field in which Jesus sowed good seed is the world of Jesus. In other words, the church of Jesus, where people who believe in Jesus gathered, is the field in which the good seed was sown. Therefore, Jesus came to preach the word of truth, the good seed, the seed of God, to the church of Jesus. But in Jesus' field, it was not only the good seed that was sown. While the people were sleeping, the enemy came and sowed weeds among them. In fact, even when the weeds are fully grown, there are no seed kernels in them. So although spiritual weeds may look like good, good seeds, aren't they a fake after all? So we can see that the weeds that were sown in Jesus' field is not truth, but lies. In this way, in Jesus' field, Jesus sowed the good seed, the truth, and the enemy also sowed lies, the weeds. Then if the good seed that Jesus sown is the seed of man, wouldn't the weeds sown by the enemy be the seed of the beast? Looking at who was in the position of being the enemy of Jesus at that time, it was the religious leaders of that time who persecuted and pointed their fingers at Jesus. It was the scribes and Pharisees. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 33, Jesus said to them, You snakes, you brood of vipers, and compared the scribes and Pharisees to beasts. So their words were the seed of the beast. To organize again, the two kinds of seeds were sown in Jesus' field, the church of Jesus, and will grow until harvest. Then, since these seeds were sown in this way, then the time to harvest the fruits will come at the proper time, correct? In Matthew chapter 13, verse 39, doesn't it describe when this harvest time will take place? Yes, it's written that it is the end of age. We should understand that the end of age is not simply the end of this earth we live in, but the end of the world of the church of Jesus, which is his field where the seed was sown. And that time is the time of the second coming of Jesus. So if you recall what began as God's prophecy at the time of the Old Testament through Jeremiah, it will pass through the first coming and be completed at the second coming. So, who is responsible for this harvest at the time of harvest? If you look at the content of what is written, harvest will be done by the angels. Then let's take a look at how the angels come down to this earth to reap the harvest in the book of Revelation. Let's read Revelation chapter 14, verses 14 to 16 together. I looked, and there before me was a white cloud, and seated on the cloud was a one like a son of man, with a crown of gold in his head, and a sharp sickle in his hand. And then another angel came out of the temple, and called in a loud voice to him who was sitting on the cloud, Take your sickle and reap, because the time to reap has come, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. So he who was seated on the cloud swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was harvested. You read well. 
In Revelation chapter 14, verses 14 to 16, it says that the harvest of the earth is ripe. So it is recorded that the angels came down with a sickle and swung it, so that the crops were harvested. You can see that this is harvest time, which was said to be the end of age. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 28, the servants came to the master and asked, Do you want us to go and pull them up? What does the owner say in verses 29 and 30? He said, No, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the wheat with them, so let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into the barn. Then before harvest time, the two seeds grow together in the church of Jesus, in Jesus' field. And before the harvest time, we cannot distinguish what kind of seed a person is born of. But after, when the harvest time comes, one can tell whether a person is born of God's seed or a person born of the devil's seed. Then, Let's look at how to distinguish between those born of God's seed and those born of the devil's seed at the time of harvest. Matthew chapter 13, verse 38 says that the wheat grown with good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom, and those born of the weeds are the sons of the evil one. So if two seeds were sown in Jesus' field 2,000 years ago and have grown to this day, did Jesus say that both wheat and weeds are harvested? No. So who are the harvesting angels going to harvest at the time of harvest? You can see that the sons of heaven who are born of God's seed are harvested into the barn by angels at the time of harvest. Then where will the weeds be, those born of the devil's seed? Yes, only weeds will remain in the field where Jesus sowed in, which is the church of Jesus. Even if there are 100, 1,000, or 10,000 people who are born of weeds, they are worse than even one who is a wheat-like believer born of God's seed, correct? Then, shouldn't all pastors, seminary students, and congregation who are listening to this word of hope of heaven reflect and think about whether one is truly born of God's seed or the devil's seed, correct? When the harvest time comes, God promises to send angels to Jesus' field to harvest the wheat and bring them into the barn. Isn't the church of Jesus, the harvest field, so large at the time of harvest, where it's all over the world now? As a result, there will be places where the harvest takes place through the harvesting angels, and there will be places where the harvesting angels has not yet arrived. So even though it's harvest time, isn't there places that doesn't know it's harvest time? However, when the time of harvest comes, we must hear the word, perceive it, so that one can be harvested as soon as possible. It's because at the time of harvest, the results of those who are harvested and go to the barn and those who remain in the field without being harvested is a result of heaven and hell. So when one hears the news of the harvest at the time of harvest, we must all become the sons of God and enter into the kingdom of heaven and eternal life together. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 4, it is written that these are the first fruits that belong to God and Jesus, having been redeemed from the earth, and are those who follow Jesus, the Lamb, wherever He leads them. In verse 1, they are those gathered together on Mount Zion, where the Lamb is. That, this is the barn of heaven, where the wheat are gathered. To give you the conclusion of the matter of heavenly farming, Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 27 prophesied that two kinds of seeds will be sown in one field, according to the promise of the Old Testament. And that word was fulfilled 600 years later at the first coming of Jesus. And two kinds of seeds were sown in the field of Jesus, the church of Jesus. 
The truth, the good seed, the Word of God, was sown through Jesus, and lies, like weeds, were sown through the Pharisees. So these two seeds have grown to this day. However, two kinds of seeds are still being sown in Jesus' church, the field. So it must be that there are those born of God's seed and those of, of the devil's seed, correct? So when can we tell them apart? Yes, it is at the time of harvest when Jesus returns again. If harvest time has come, but if one remains in the field of Jesus' church, isn't it proof that one is born of the devil's seed? So let me ask you another question. Are the pastors, seminary students, and members of the congregation who are listening to these words, have you been harvested? Or will you remain in the field? I hope that we will not simply cry out with our mouths, Lord, Lord, but soon be born again with God's seed, be harvested, and become God's precious children who can enter the kingdom of heaven. So let's take a look at the third parable of the tree. If you look in the Bible, there are trees that are common in the nation of Israel. And one of them is the vine. So the Israelites picked grapes from the vines and made wine and ate them. But in John chapter 15, verse 1, Jesus said that he was a true vine. How can a person be a tree? He was not speaking physically or literally about a tree, but a spiritual figurative tree, and he compared himself to a vine, in other words, a grape tree. Just as a seed becomes a tree when it grows, when a person grows through the seed of God's word, his inner heart will change into the image of God. Therefore, the tree will become the inner person who is born again from the seed of the word and also the shepherd. First, let's read the verses of the parable in Matthew chapter 13, verse 31 to 32, related to tree. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all your seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. You read well. As mentioned earlier, the seed is the Word of God. We saw that the seed of the Word is sown in a field of a person's heart. But looking at the words of Matthew chapter 13, verse 31 to 32, the kingdom of heaven is like a seed that grows into a tree. After that, it says that the birds of the air will come and perch in its branches. So do you see this as heaven? In order to understand clearly, we must also know the spiritual meaning of the tree and bird. First of all, if we look at the physical characteristics, a tree is made from a seed. Then, without the seed, a tree cannot grow, correct? And when they're all grown, a bird can actually perch on it. And if you look closely, a tree has branches and leaves, and when it is fully grown, it bears fruit. This is a natural principle of physical nature. Considering these characteristics, let's see what the spiritual tree means. In Isaiah chapter 5, verse 7, God compared the people of Israel to vines planted in vineyards and the people of Judah to garden or trees. And in Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 14, it is written that my words will become like fire and his people will be like the wood or trees. So you can think of people as trees. But not everyone becomes a tree, correct? Just as there must be a seed to become a tree, so the seed of God's word will grow and the newly born again inner man will become a tree. In summary, the tree is the inner person who is born again from the seed of the word. 
and regarding the shepherd. But when you look at a tree, doesn't it have branches, leaves, and fruits? First, if we look at the physical tree, the branch is always attached to the tree. If Jesus was a tree, who was the branch that was always attached to Jesus? They were the 12 disciples of Jesus who were always with him wherever he went. So, a branch is a disciple that follows the shepherd. In John chapter 15, verse 1, about 2,000 years ago, Jesus said that God, his father, was a farmer or gardener and that he was a true vine. And in verse 5, he compared branches to the 12 disciples that Jesus was with. So, you can see that Jesus had 12 branches. So, the true meaning of the spiritual branch is a disciple. Then you have to look at the leaves attached to the branches, correct? To start with the answer, the leaf is an evangelist who spreads the word of life. If you look at the physical trees, they have many leaves on their branches. In fact, these leaves play an important role in bearing fruit. Then the parable of leaves in the Bible also play a role in saving and helping something, correct? Then let's read the words of Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 12 together. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear, because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food, and their leaves for healing. In Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 12, it is written that this leaf is like medicine for healing. There are people who may be physically ill, but there are also the spiritually ill. Even if we see the Word of God that contains life, we hear it, but we do not understand it, is it not like the soul of man who withers away like dry grass in an empty field? If you deliver the Word of life to such a sick person to lead them to truth and save their soul, then the person who delivered the Word plays the role of a leaf. So the leaf is like an evangelist who fulfills the, the duty of evangelism. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 2, it says that the tree of life grows on both sides of the river, and the leaves of the tree of life is for healing all nations. If these are real, literal leaves, you would have to feed people with literal leaves such as cabbage leaves or lettuce leaves, in order to save and heal the spiritually sick in the world. But of course, you can see that that is nonsense. The only ingredient that, that can save people's souls and revive and heal all the nations of the world is not physical leaves, but the Word of God. So in summary, a leaf is an evangelist who spreads the word. So if a tree is a person, a branch is a person, and a leaf is a person, what kind of fruit will it bear? Yes, then the fruit is a saint who is connected and bore with the word. Then what kind of person will they become? In James chapter 1, verse 18, it is written that he chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits. Therefore, the saints who was bore or connected through the word will become the precious fruit of God. And the parable of fruit has one more meaning. When the tree is viewed as an individual rather than an organization, the words that come out of one's mouth also becomes fruit. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 33 to 35, it speaks about the overflow of the heart, where good words come out of the mouth of a good person, and evil words come out of the mouth of an evil person. Then, since the words that come out of a person's mouth are fruit, when the word of truth that saves the human spirit comes out, it becomes the tree of life. So 
On the contrary, when the lies that kills the human spirit comes out, it is the fruit of the tree of good and evil. So to summary and to organize, the parable of fruit represents either the word or the saint, saints who are bore or connected through the word. Then if you, who are listening to this word now, contain the word one by one in your heart and perceive within, your, within the word, then you are becoming the reality of the ripe first fruits that are so beautiful in the sight of God. I hope that all of us can be born as God's precious first fruits. Now, if there are two kinds of spiritual seeds here, how many trees will naturally grow? Yes, they will grow in two ways, correct? So let's look at these two types of trees. God sowed the seed of life on this earth, and when the seed grows into a tree, and, birds, and then the birds perch, He said that this is like the kingdom of heaven. Then, since it is a tree grown from the seed of life, that tree will become the tree of life. At the first coming, 2,000 years ago, Jesus and the, His organization will be, became the true vine in John chapter 15, the reality of the tree of life and the reality of the kingdom of heaven. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. So from the mouth of Jesus, the tree of life, the word of life, truth came out. Then, to organize, the tree of God is the true shepherd and its people or organization, correct? So if I follow the word and belong to the tr true shepherd and its organization, that will be the path of life to the kingdom of heaven. Conversely, there are trees that have grown from the seed sown of Satan, the devil, that is the seed of death. However, the Bible does not call it the tree of death, but calls it wild vine, wild vine, or the tree of good and evil. In Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 32 33, says that their vine is the vine of Sodom. Their grapes are filled with poison and their clusters with bitterness. And their wine is the venom of serpents and the poison of cobras. Then the vine is a wild vine and it is poisonous. So if one eats of it, one will die. That is why in the Bible, a false pastor is called the wild vine or the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Then, just as there is a tree of good, Tree, just as the tree of good, of good and evil bears the fruit of good and evil, what will come out of the mouth of a false pastor? Lies that kills the human spirit. This will be the fruit of knowledge that should never be eaten. At the first coming of Jesus, lies that is the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil came out of the mouths of the Pharisees and the scribes. And these were the wild vines and the reality of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. To summarize, the tree of Satan is a false pastor and its organization. Lastly, let's go over the parable of bird. In Genesis chapter 8, Noah got onto the ark to avoid the judgment of the flood from God, and after that, he sent a dove to check how much water had descended. In this way, there are physical birds in the Bible. But as in Matthew chapter 13, verse 31 to 32, when the spiritual tree is fully grown, there are also spiritual birds that perch in it. Just as physical bird flies to a physical tree, who will come to those who are born again of the seed of God's word? Yes, the Holy Spirit of heaven will be with that person. So, the spiritual meaning of the bird is spirit. First, if we look at the physical characteristic of birds, they can fly freely anywhere. And after determining where it is a tree on which they can sit, they go directly to that tree and perch down on it. Jesus said that a bird perching in a tree is like heaven. 
So if a tree is a person, then let's see how the bird, that is spirit, comes down. Let's read the words of Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, together. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting on him. So if you look at the content in Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist and came up out of the water, the Spirit of God, like a dove, came down upon Jesus. Just like a bird perches on a tree, God, who is holy, was with Jesus. Therefore, Jesus was the reality of the kingdom of heaven where God was with, 2,000 years ago. Also in Revelation chapter 19, verse 17, all the birds flying in midair is called to gather at the wedding supper of heaven, which is God's great banquet. The birds here are not physical, but we can understand that they are spirits that are gathered in heaven. In this way, as we are seeing this spiritually, the birds of God, there are also birds of Satan, the devil. In Luke chapter 8, verse 5 and verse 12, there is a bird that takes away and devours the seed that is sown in the field of a person's heart. This is a devil that takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. So if you look at Revelation chapter 18, verse 2, you can see that there is a place called Babylon where these unclean detestable birds, which are evil spirits, are gathered. To organize all this, the parable of bird represents spirit. And there are two types, Holy Spirit, the bird of God, and the evil spirit, the bird of Satan. Physical birds are able to discern what tree that they can sit on. Likewise, the bird of God is with the tree of life, and the bird of Satan is with the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And this divides between heaven and hell. So as believers who hope for the kingdom of God, what kind of bird should come fly to us? It is God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and the angels must be the birds that are one with us. So what should we do in the future so that the bird of God can be with us? Shouldn't we be able to discern the true shepherd, the tree of life, and the false pastor, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and find the tree of life and belong to it? So how can we discern and perceive and understand? In Matthew chapter 7, verse 15 to 20, it says that a good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. As you can know a tree by its fruit, the words that come out of a shepherd's mouth will tell if that tree is a tree of life belonging to God, or if it is the tree of knowledge of good and evil belonging to Satan, the devil. Ultimately, the word of truth, the fruit of the tree of life, comes out of the mouth of the true shepherd, who is the tree of life. Then, all those who are listening to the word of God must now understand that in order to fulfill heaven and eternal life, one must perceive about the two types of trees regarding the two types of pastors, distinguish through the word of truth, and be a part of the tree of life, the true shepherd. So let's summarize the conclusion of today's content. The words of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven in the Bible that we study today were the parables of the seed, field, tree, and bird. The true meaning of the spiritual seed is the word of God, the field is a person's heart, and also the world, and the tree is the inner person born again through the seed of the word, and also the shepherd, and the bird represent spirit where there are holy spirits and evil spirits that appear in the Bible. From this, we could understand that two kinds of seeds were sown in Jesus' field. So the children of God born of God's seed are harvested at the time of harvest, that is, to the barn of heaven at the end of age. And those born of the devil seed are not harvested, but remain in the field and are burned, in other words, receive judgment. 
Finally, we perceive that there are two seeds, two trees, and two birds, which are the parables of heaven in the Bible. So we must belong to God and Jesus, who is with the true shepherd, the tree of life. And we must make all effort to become a true believer who can achieve heaven and eternal life and be guided by the Spirit. Amen. As Jesus promised, we can testify to this clearly because the reality of what was said in parables have been revealed. In the subsequent lecture, a lecturer who is better than myself will testify to the Word. So I hope you will all listen to it, perceive the secrets of heaven, and participate in heaven together. Lastly, it will be nice if we can proclaim together we are one with the, be with the meaning of being one in God and Jesus. So when I say we are one, if you can raise your finger like this and shout together, we are one in God and in Jesus. We are one. Thank you very much. Let's all pray to God together. God, the Holy Father, who is the source of life and blessings, we genuinely thank you for allowing us to live at the time of harvest when this word is revealed that is being testified and for allowing us to come to you and helping us to hear and understand the precious words of life. You have created the 12 tribes of Shincheonji today in this era, the, your kingdom on this earth, according to the will of heaven, where you, Jesus and the promised shepherd who was chosen and sent today, are there. Uh, where there is no more death, granting life. All the pastors, seminary students, and precious congregation from all over the world who are here with us. For so long, so many have wandered in the world with a thirsty soul to find truth. They have come across your word of the parables of the secrets of heaven, which were hidden in the, in the Bible, and the precious words that testify to their realities today. Please hold on to their spirits and be with them so that they can enjoy true peace without, within your love. Please work so that we can become one in the Word with you and Jesus instead of walking our separate paths with different religions and different doctrines. In the future, as we continue to learn the parables of the secrets of heaven and their true meanings, please work within us so that we can all be born of your seed, be harvested, and become the reality of true we like believers in the barn of heaven. We earnestly pray that you will grant us boundless grace and love, and we believe and pray for all these words in the name of Jesus, who is our life. Amen. Yes, thank you so much for listening to the very end. Believers of God whom I love, what do food and famine signify here? Does he mean the physical and literal famine of food? I hope everyone can clearly understand what kind of food it is through today's seminar. When the prophecies are fulfilled, shouldn't we hear and recognize the fulfillment? Please give another round of applause to thank Instructor Lee Chae-in, who testified to the precious words of God today. Did you get a chance to see for yourself how clear Shin Chunji's revealed word is? I hope it was a time to find your true hope in heaven. On Thursday, instructor Kim Pum Jin from Thaddeus Tribe will be teaching us Lesson 5, The Figurative Food and East. Please do attend to perceive God's word of truth so we can enter the kingdom of heaven, which is our hope. If you have any questions about Shincheonji Church of Jesus and the Revealed Word, please call the number you see on the screen now. We'll make sure to guide you in detailed manner with kindness.
Let us finish today's seminar with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as He also forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. With this, we'll complete Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on the Parables of the Secrets of Heaven and Their True Meanings. Thank you for being with us today.